Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I've got another Q&A video for you guys, this time showing you how to build a two-wheel drive electric bike. Now you guys remember how my Q&A videos work. You put your questions about e-bikes or lithium batteries or anything in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer them, and if I make a video response to your question, then I will give you a free copy of either my first book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my second book, DIY Lithium Batteries, How to Build Your Own Battery Packs. Now, today's question comes from WJF213, who asks, how do you build a two-wheel drive electric bicycle? Now, if you take a look at my e-bike here, first of all, you'll see that it kind of looks like a piece of crap, which, by the way, is on purpose. It's a little bit of urban camouflage, but it's got something special. When I turn the throttle, both wheels drive. Now, why would you want a two-wheel drive electric bike? There are a few reasons. In my case, here in Tel Aviv, there's a legal limit on how big of a motor you can have, and the limit is 250 watts. I used to have a thousand watt motor, but those big, you know, nine continent style direct drive motors are just magnets for police if you live in an area with low limits. So instead of having one big thousand watt motor, I got two smaller 350 watt motors and just overvolted them. So now I've got about 1100 watts on this bike with two motors that you can barely see. Now another good reason would be for traction. If you do a lot of riding on, um, you know, snow or sand like here, then having a two-wheel drive e-bike can be really fun because it gives you a lot of uh, really good grip in those conditions. I've got these like really thin uh, street tires on my bike now, but even with these ridiculous tires, I can still get some good traction here on the sand, which is fun. The last reason would just be if you want more power. You know, if one motor is good, then two motors are better. So now let's look at how to make all the connections on a two-wheel drive e-bike. Now, when I first built my e-bike a couple of years ago, I used a uh, wiring diagram that was designed by Berend Hoffman on Endlosphere. Now he's got this really nice wiring diagram that shows you how to connect every single accessory and is good for pretty powerful e-bikes, up to like three or four kilowatts. But I'm going to show you a bit of a simpler wiring diagram that I'll make here that just shows you how to do the bare necessities to get your two-wheel drive e-bike going. And then if you want to go back and add all sorts of accessories, you can check out his diagram. Now in both Berend's version and my version of wiring up a two-wheel drive e-bike, we both used a Cycle Analyst version 3, which is a really common e-bike watt meter. And what it does is it easily allows you to plug one throttle into it to control a number of motors if you want. And uh, I'll show you how to do this method first, but if you want to do a, a cheaper way and you want to skip the Cycle Analyst, I'll show you how to do that as well. So here's my setup. I started with the two motors, and I used two identical 350 watt motors. You can use any size motor you want, but if you use identical motors, it'll just be much easier. Next, I connected these two motors to two controllers. Each motor gets its own identical controller. I just used the cheapest 48 volt controllers I could find on AliExpress, to be honest. And you know, it works great. Next, I have both of my controllers connected to a single battery. If you do this, make sure your battery is strong enough to handle both motors and controllers. You can just as easily use two batteries independently, but I prefer to use just a single strong battery to make things simpler for me. In between the battery and the controllers though, I added the remote shunt for the cycle analyst. The remote shunt wire runs up to the cycle analyst on my handlebars. On my handlebars I also have my throttle, and I just plug that straight into the cycle analyst version 3, not into the controllers like is normally required on an e-bike. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Each controller has a throttle connector, and each connector has three wires. A positive 5 volt wire, a negative wire, and a signal wire. I don't need to use the positive and negative wires at all, because the cycle analyst already gives power to the throttle. The remote shunt has a single green wire in it that is for the throttle signal. I connect that to both of the signal wires from the controllers. Now my throttle signal wire passes through the cycle analyst and into the controllers. This allows my cycle analyst to give me more control over my settings, such as throttle ramping, speed and current limits, etc. If I wanted to limit my bike to one wheel drive sometimes, I could add a switch in line with one of these signal wires and run that switch up to the handlebars. That way, I'd cut the circuit to one controller and it wouldn't get any throttle signal. But on my bike, I just have both motors running all the time. This is the best method for me since I can use my cycle analyst to do all sorts of programming. But if you don't want to use a cycle analyst, you would slightly modify this. You'd remove the cycle analyst and the remote shunt. Then you'd run your throttle wire all the way down to your controllers from the handlebar. You'd plug the signal wire from your throttle into both signal wires and the controllers, but you'd only connect the positive and negative wires from a single controller to the throttle, since it only needs power from one source. It doesn't matter which one you use. This method is cheaper, since you don't need a cycle analyst, but it gives you less control over your entire system. You're basically limited to full power, which might be more than most people want. 
You see, both of my controllers are 18 amps, and my motors are actually rated for 36 volts, but I overvolt them to 52 volts. And they've been working great like that for nearly two years now. But at 18 amps times 52 volts, that's 936 watts. Since I have two 18 amp controllers, that'd be 36 amps times 52 volts, giving me 1,872 watts. That's more than I want, so I use my cycle analyst to limit the current draw from the battery. Right now I have it set to limit me to 22 amps, which means approximately 11 amps per controller, assuming they're sharing the load approximately equally. That's a total of 1,144 watts, which is plenty for my purposes. By using the cycle analyst to limit my current, I can maintain a reasonable power level even when using two controllers. If I used the second method I described earlier without the cycle analyst, I'd be stuck with full power anytime I turn the throttle all the way, which would be almost 2,000 watts with my current setup. So that's the method I've used on my e-bike for the last couple of years, and it's worked great using a Cycle Analyst version 3 to control both controllers and motors with a single throttle. But if you want to skip the Cycle Analyst, because it is a bit expensive, you can just wire your throttle straight into the signal wire from both controllers, and then use the power and ground of the throttle connector on one controller to power your throttle. It's a little bit more complicated, but you know, it's the same thing in the end. You just don't get any of those limiting options, so you want to make sure that your batteries or your single battery is strong enough to uh, power both motors and controllers. Now, thank you very much for the question, WJF213. Shoot me a private message here on YouTube, and I will um, send you a copy of either of my books. Just send me your address. And for anyone else that wants to win a free copy of my books, please leave a message or a comment below with uh, whatever your question is. I'll do my best to answer them. If I choose yours, you'll get a copy of my book. And if you don't want to wait to potentially win a copy, you can find both my books on Amazon. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. All right, so here's a little bonus feature for all of you that stayed till after the credits. So while I'm already down here by the beach in Tel Aviv, I thought I'd point something out. I don't know how many e-bikes you guys have in your cities and towns, but in Tel Aviv, it's just crazy. There's like tens of thousands of e-bikes around here. It's, it's really nuts. So I thought I'd just uh, take a minute here and show you guys just a sample of how many there are. Uh, a couple years ago, I actually did a survey out here on this bike trail by the beach and counted how many bikes went by. And I think I got something like 20% uh, of bikes or so were e-bikes. Let's take a look now and, and see how it looks. I'm just gonna do a uh, like a 10 bike survey real quick here. Let's see. Oh, we got a pedal bike for the first one. All right, we got one pedal bike. That's an e-bike, two e-bikes. Another pedal bike. E-bike. Another pedal bike, four pedal bikes, e-bike. We got an e-bike and a pedal bike. So that's not bad. Five out of the first ten bikes to go by were e-bikes. Fifty percent in my entirely non-scientific survey. Uh, that's pretty good, I think. How many e-bikes are in your city? Let me know in the comments. All right, thanks for watching, guys.